Welcome to the show. Have you ever noticed that social justice activists all sound the same? And by that, I don't mean they've all got plummy, upper-middle-class accents, although they generally do. I mean that they all seem to speak in the same sort of language. They use terms like problematic, toxic masculinity, white privilege, decolonization, cis-heteronormativity, and a million other buzzwords. And then there are the slogans. Here are some examples. Trans women are women. You are erasing our existence. Your words are violence. That's my lived experience. Now, Robert J. Lifton has described these kind of terms as thought-terminating cliches. Those, quote, brief, highly reductive, definitive-sounding phrases that become the start and finish of any ideological analysis. Culture warriors use these cliches to try and put an end to the conversation. The phrases simply don't invite further questions. And when they do, we end up in this weirdly circular discussion. You'll have no doubt seen exchanges like the following on social media. Trans women are women. What is a woman? Anyone who identifies as a woman. But how do I know how to identify as a woman if you can't define woman? The definition of a woman is anyone who identifies as a woman. And this goes round and round and round. All of this brings to mind the 19th century headmaster Andrew Ingram, who coined this interesting phrase. The Gostak distims the doshes. Now, the sentence is syntactically sound. There is a subject, an object, and an identifiable verb. As such, we understand that the doshes are able to be distimmed and that such distimming is carried out by the Gostak. Or if you want to see this in dialogue form, it looks like this. What is the Gostak? The Gostak is what distims the doshes. What's distimming? Distimming is what the Gostak does to the doshes. OK, but what are the doshes? The doshes are what the Gostak distims. And this is how these ideological discussions often go. They've come up with these impressive-sounding words and concepts that can only really be understood in reference to other nebulous words and concepts. And you can see why this might drive everyone insane. And, of course, that's the whole point. When people are speaking different languages, there can be no possibility of conversation. This week, my friend Peter Bogosian, who's an American philosopher and academic, released a video in which he is seen attempting to reason with a group of activist students at Portland State University. He's conducting a thought experiment in the plaza, and he's asking people to talk through contentious statements such as defund the police and there are only two genders. And it was this statement that upset some of the students. So at first you can see them on top of the building shouting and swearing at him, but then they come outside and they approach him. Here's a clip. We're just sort of here to sort of advocate and um, elevate who might be harmed by a statement. Like what do you that? mean by harmed? Harmed? Yeah. Um, well, people who have been like historically and currently oppressed, right, by dominant systems, patriarchy, whiteness, uh, masculinity, all of the systems. And I'm just wondering, like, are any of you all, like, trained professionals in trauma-informed care, like, if a transgender individual were to come to the space and participate, and then there was a triggering response where they needed emotional support, like, are you ready to support that? So campus is supposed to be a safe space where everyone can exist freely in their own identities and who they are and be learning and be talking about these really, really important things within our culture and society. The idea of there being only two genders is a social construct because we have have this idea of being assigned assigned female at birth, assigned male at birth. Now, I'm non-binary. That's something that I have learned about myself over the last six, seven years. After I was a teenager, I was learned about sociology. I learned about gender as a social contract. And I realized that I don't fit into the box of just a cis woman. Okay, my gender is completely whatever I feel like in the moment. Now, remember that this is all because Peter was simply asking people to discuss the statement, there are only two genders. And the video is worth watching in full. It's on Peter's website. Because what you hear are people who are speaking in slogans as a substitute for thought. As you heard in that brief excerpt, all of them are repeating identical mantras. And all of this was outlined in 1945 in an essay by George Orwell called Politics and the English Language. He wrote... A speaker who uses that kind of phraseology has gone some distance toward turning himself into a machine. The appropriate noises are coming out of his larynx, but his brain is not involved as it would be if he were choosing his words for himself. If the speech he is making is one that he is accustomed to make over and over again, he may be almost unconscious of what he is saying. 
as one is when on, one utters the responses in church. And that's what we're hearing from Culture Warriors, just the mindless repetition of liturgical cant. One gets the depressing sense of a hive mind, people who have subordinated their individuality to a bigger ideological project. Whereas most young people still go to university to debate, to be challenged and to consider alternative worldviews, this minority of activists, they go to university in order to conform. So when you hear these buzzwords, these thought terminating cliches, it's always worth probing a little more, asking some further questions. Culture warriors don't like debate because that risks taking them away from the approved script. They might even have to challenge some of their own certainties. But we should never forget that beneath all this jargon, these are intelligent human beings who have simply forgotten what it feels like to think for themselves.